Welcome back to part three, the Midnight in the Desert edition of From Day One. As always, we grab the mailbag first. Let's see what was missing since the last time we were together. Two fireworks shot off. Alrighty. Grab some energy. Got some dungeon crawling to do tonight. So we start our new Midnight in the Desert episode tonight. Another Open Lines show originally from August 21st, 2015. The Open Lines topic, A Pact with the Devil. From the high desert and the great American Southwest, I bid you all good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Whatever the case is, wherever you are, doesn't matter. Welcome to Open Lines tonight. We're going to have some fun. The rules of this program are no bad language. Language. Well, both of them, above all, really. I want to take a moment because it's very, very important. If you have a smartphone, that's right. If you have a smartphone, it doesn't matter what kind, you know, uh, Apple, Android. I'm not so sure about BlackBerry, but I think they probably would. Somebody should call with the BlackBerry so I can find out. Um, it's so easy to call us and sound like a million dollars. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you use Skype, on a smartphone. Oh my goodness, you really, really, really sound good. You sound like you're right here in the studio. And so what you say carries more authority, authority, when you say it. So, here's how you do it. You put Skype in your uh, smartphone. That's, you just go to the store and get Skype. And then once you get it, it is this simple. You go to add contact, not not to where you dial a number, but to add a contact with a plus sign in Skype. And you add me. And how do you do that? You, uh, If you're in North America, America, or Canada, you add me by putting in MITD51. That's Midnight in the Desert. MITD, it's not case sensitive, 51. And then I'll be in your contact list, and you can press that and dial me. Free. Now, worldwide, it works the same way. The difference is if you're outside of North America, you put in MITD 55. Again, you go to add a contact, that's a little plus sign in Skype, and put in MITD 55. Five, and I'll be in your contact list. You can press it, and away we go. All right, before we get started, this is going to be a crazy, crazy show tonight. Uh, this is very serious news, I think. North Korea says it is all set for an all-out war against South Korea beginning at 5.30 p.m. That would be 2.30 here in the morning on the West Coast. This is a deadline that this idiot in North Korea has set for the South Koreans to stop broadcasting propaganda. They've got all these speakers set up, broadcasting all the propaganda into North Korea. North Korea is saying if they don't stop, they don't dismantle the speakers by that time, it is war. I mean war. There's already been artillery exchange, that kind of thing. I think the uh, North Koreans aimed at the speakers and missed. Doesn't say much for their smart weapons, huh? Anyway, they missed, and then South Korea fired a whole artillery barrage back at them. And now there is this deadline. And, you know, this maniac in North Korea, you cannot tell if he's serious, but giving a time deadline sounds serious. The U.S. actually suspended the exercises it was doing for a period of time with South Korea because they consider it that serious. So, you know, it could be the same old baloney from North Korea, or it could be a war just after I get off the air. Hard to say. Uh, the U.S. stock market took a really, really big hit. I think it went about 530-some-odd points down. 
bad. Everybody is worried about China. China is driving all of this. Now, oil prices, on the other hand, are going down to about 40 bucks a barrel. So that's the good news. Uh, they expect the pump prices to roughly become two bucks. <laughs> that sounds good, right? I don't know about the rest of it, though. The Vatican's chief astronomer uh, says he does not believe that we will encounter any intelligent forms of life from outside our own galaxy anytime soon, especially, said he, when it's so difficult to encounter intelligent life here on our planet. <laughs> uh, since the humor in the Vatican. Um, the, the father said that... Uh, or made an admission, actually, that the Bible is not a scientific book. His father, Tunis, F-U-N-E-S, Tunis, I don't know. Anyway, he says, if we look for scientific responses to our questions in the Bible, we are making a mistake. Now, when do you hear that from the Bible? My goodness. All right, and here's the big one. This is going to drive the special line tonight. Now, we do have open lines. That means, yeah, you know, call about anything. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Anything that, uh, that you want to talk about is fair game. But um, the Vatican now says that uh, demon possession is at, quoting here, emergency levels. A top Vatican meeting, demon busters and psychiatrists group warned uh, that more and more people were dabbling in black magic, becoming possessed as a result. Walter Cascali, Cascali, the spokesman for the International Association of Exorcists, which is now holding its first meeting ever at the Holy See, said last night, the practice of the occult, Satanism, and abnormal things is opening the gateway to an extraordinary amount of demonic activity. They have never, ever seen anything like it. They are saying it is at emergency levels. And this will drive my special line tonight. Other than open lines and anything you want to talk about, what I want to know is the following. Have you made a deal with the devil? I really mean that. Have you made a deal with the devil? And I know a lot of you have. Now, I know it's going to be hard to pick up the phone and admit it, but I think many of you will. And if you have made a deal with the devil, how's it going? <laughs> uh, now, listen to me. Contrary to what you may see in the movies, there is not going to be some guy with horns, glowing red eyes, coming to see you you know, with a piece of paper to sign. Uh-uh, uh-uh, doesn't work that way. You can make a deal with the devil by doing it in your head. You can say, I want a million dollars, and I am willing to, this is just rehearsing, so if you're out there, devil, don't take this seriously. I, I've got my million. Um, I'm willing to sacrifice everything, anything, whatever, to get there. And once you have done that mentally, you have made a deal with the devil. You have. Believe it. Doesn't doesn't have to be a signed document. This is something you do in your own mind and your own soul. And I think that it is irrevocable. I think you cannot, once you've made this deal, revoke the deal. It's interesting. Um, I had this topic up on Facebook and um, I got a response before I even went on the air from Gary, who is writing from the Czech Republic. And he said, yes, I made a deal with the devil and every spirit of earth and sky for the woman of my dreams. That was five years ago, Gary says, and we are more in love than ever. But. It has cost me everything. Tough one. Uh, he may call in tonight. I hope he does, because that's exactly what I'm talking about. This is a pact you make in your own mind. 
And again, I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's irrevocable. Once you've made it, you may get what you wanted, but I don't think you can take the deal back. All right, so here are uh, here's a quick rendition of the numbers, and then away we go. Are you ready? My public number, the one all of you can use, is area code 952-225-5278. Again, area code 952-225-5278. Put a one in front of that. Now, if you have made a deal with the devil, I'm going to give out a number right now, and that is area code 575. Two zero eight seven seven eight seven. Got that? Devil doers, have you got that? Area code five seven five two zero eight seven seven eight seven. With all. All right, they're in a musical bumper, so of course we're out of that bumper. So they. From the Kingdom of Nye, this is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please call the show at 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL. This is going to be a wild one, no question about it. Once again, those who have made a deal with the devil, and I'm not going to identify where you're calling from, by the way, should call at area code 575-208-7787. Every line is full. That line actually was full. The devil line, 575-208-7787, but he chickened out. I know it's 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 hard. It's really hard. Well, there it's ringing again. So let's uh, let's let's give it a try. Let's see what we get. Uh, you are on the air. Hello. Hello. I was actually uh, just wanting to make a comment about something that you had said. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait. You're calling the I made a deal with the devil line. Oh, okay. I can't say it here then. No, you can't. Not unless you made a deal. Did you, you? You sound like you might have made a deal. Did you? No, no. I. I oh, come on now. Come on. You dialed the number. You must. You must have made a deal. Think back. No, in, no, think I, back in your life now. There was never a time when you said, "Oh, no matter who it is, I don't care. I'll make a deal if I get so." No, so. no. Um, All right, then then I, I have to ban then I have to ban you from this line. Okay, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, let's go to uh, Shane on Skype. Hello, Shane. Hey, Art. Thanks for taking my call. <laughs> you bet. I'm amazed, first of all, how clear it sounds when I'm on hold, even on the Skype. Thing. Well, yeah, I know <laughs> it, it's um, astounding, uh, actually. Audio. Where are you? I am in Colby, Kansas. And what are you talking to me on? I'm talking to you on an iPhone. <laughs> now, see, case in point, folks. And I don't even have the iPhone 6 like you've got. I got the iPhone 5S. Well, they, they make good products. Sir. Yes, they do. Even um, even if their stock took a giant hit today, by the way. So did <laughs> yeah, you know? I saw that. Yeah. They still make good stuff. I wanted to talk to you briefly. One of the most fascinating subjects. I've come across in my life is Area 51. I can't read enough about it. And I heard you talking a couple of weeks ago on a show about a caller that you had years ago oh, yeah. who flew an airplane. And then I found it on YouTube and I listened to that. That's right. Um, I got to say, I think it's real. Oh, me too. Uh, I, I listened to that thing over and over and I really think the guy did it. Now, my question is. Did you ever hear anything about that guy? No, and I, I don't like losing listeners that way either. I really don't. I, you know, no. I mean, I think he probably went down in flames, more or less. Well, yeah, because the government wouldn't say that somebody flew a plane into Area 51. Mostly. Look here, I, I live right next to Area 51. I can tell you the signs are very clear. Uh, it, you know, deadly force is authorized, and they're not kidding. They will use it. Mm -hmm. uh, one more quick thing. Well, actually, two quick things. One, are you ever going to do a show on Area 51? Um, I'm sure there's no question about it. I will, yes, of course. And then my final question, yes. and I'll uh, let you go, is how close have you actually gotten to Area 51? Like, have you gotten to the mailbox that you see on TV yes. where you can go? Yes. I've and been what there. did you see when you went there? The mailbox. 
But you, I mean, what did you see when you looked out past that? Um, well, when you're it, when you're in Nevada, you see a lot. I mean, okay. your, your line of sight is probably 40 miles to 50 miles to the mountains, you know. So um, no saucers, nothing like that. Saw the mailbox. Uh, thought about going further <laughs> and didn't. You know, that sign is really effective uh, when it says they will use deadly force. They will. And so, you know. Uh, you do it and let me know how it goes. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, have a good night, sir. Yeah, you too. <laughs> See you later. All right, on May. This is my I made a deal with the devil line. Hello. Hello. Hi. So, uh, do I have the real thing here? Have you actually at some point made a deal with the devil? Uh, well, I uh, I went through a process that I thought was going to do that. I can't tell you with any certainty what degree of success came around from that, but I certainly went through a, a, a process, and uh, some very scary things happened as a result of that. So. Well, okay. Why did you, but most importantly, why did you decide to make the deal? Um, I don't know. I guess I was very young at the time, and I felt uh, powerless, mm -hmm. and I felt like maybe uh, this would be an opportunity for me to to get out of, uh, you know, economic oppression and uh, several other things that were that I saw as my future at that time. I, I had you know medical conditions and, mm -hmm. and poverty and I things get I it. wanted to escape. I get it. Uh, so, what was your wish at the time? You wanted economic prosperity. You wanted money. Well, in, in actuality, I had already done a couple of uh, candle magic things that I had learned by purchasing books at a New Age bookstop uh, bookstore for money, and that had kind of worked, and, and a girl, and that had kind of worked. I'd seen some results from, from doing those repetitive, meditative things around that. Right. So the actual request that I had at, at that time was, uh, I know it's silly, but uh, the ability to uh, levitate another human. <laughs> to levitate, <laughs> so a, a, not yourself, but another. Correct. If someone were attacking me or if I wanted to, I don't know, coerce someone into doing something, that if I could just levitate them off of the ground a little bit or something of that mm. nature to scare them, uh, that, that that would uh, be sufficient to, you know, Make the uh, reach deal. other yeah. goals. In my All right. So are you able to levitate anybody? <laughs> no, uh, not in any real way. I was a professional magician <laughs> for a while, mm -hmm. um, so I don't know uh, to what degree that that trickery uh, works. In, well, it uh, sounds to me like you, deal. yeah, it sounds to me like you kind of signed the deal when you when you did the candle stuff and the rituals and the money and the girl. That probably sealed the deal anyway. Well, what we, you know, what was very strange for me was I had purchased a prop skull made of plastic from a, you know, from a Halloween store or whatever, yes. and I had a large black candle that I placed in the top of it, and I, I went through this process. I used a communion wafer, but it wasn't a, a communion wafer that had been uh, blessed or anything. It was just something I purchased at a Christian bookstore, and uh, I had prepared that and, and written a request on a piece of paper and burned it over that candle or whatever. Very just, uh, know, Yeah, just we're talking up. serious ritual here. Yeah, and I just made it up. So I didn't you, have a book so, and told me to okay, do yeah, that. But I just did it. You got the money. You got the girl. And uh, But during that, that particular ritual, uh, the candle melted very quickly. went down into the, the skull, which was made of plastic, and that melted uh, uh, very quickly. I had, further uh, evidence, I that for, further evidence yeah. sir, the deal was con consummated. Yeah. And I, I, I was awakened by my parents. The room was filled with black smoke from the... You know, from the melting plastic. Uh, there or, you have it. Uh, at some point, I passed out. I understand. So, uh, Sounds serious. Yeah, that was my experience. So, uh, when you get down to the big fire, well, how old are you now? Uh, I'm 40, 41 now. I was 41. probably around 17 at that time. I see. Um, so, let's see, another 30 or 40 years easily as yours, maybe even 50. And then, well. Uh, well, no, actually, I have. Uh, I have kidney disease now, about 19% kidney function, so I'm okay. approaching uh, the device, Another 10, so maybe 20 years, and then uh, well, okay. Uh, listen, I wish there was a way you could, you know, when you meet your what would be the right word? Uh, I, you know, normally you would say maker, but 
I guess your business partner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Very honest and very straightforward. There you have it. He cut his deal. I told you there'd be people. I told you. So the deal line, if you made a deal with the devil, it's area code 575-208-7787. Let's go here on the phone and say hello there. Hello? Hey, yes, hey. Lake Charles. Lake Charles, Louisiana. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm just fine. I've been on hold, so I haven't been able to be hearing the uh, the show. I've had my radio off. But well, you should be able to hear it on hold. No, it was just, it was, there was nothing on hold. Really? Yeah, nothing. Uh, no, wait a minute. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to count to four. Okay. You tell me if you hear me, okay? One, two, three, four. Did you hear that? Nothing. I beg pardon? Nothing. You did or didn't? I did not hear anything. It's just silent. Oh, man, that's not cool. That's not no. cool. You're supposed to be getting program audio when you're on hold. Sure was. No, there, there's none at all. Okay. That's, uh, thank, that's you for, thank you for that's informing fine. me. Yeah. That's I will, fine. I'll ask the next caller as well. What can I do for you? Hey, I just wanted to, uh, first of all, welcome back. And I wanted to thank your, your, your family for allowing you to come back because I'm sure that's a sacrifice on on all on all your parts. Just well, you're right. Uh, it is. It is. And um, I want to thank my family for it too. Uh, they miss me, and um, it, you know, doing a radio program takes more than you think it does. Uh, people think, ah, oh, you know, three hours. Come on, anybody can do that. No, it takes yeah, preparation. It takes, yeah, it takes a lot. Well, we thank them because uh, we get to reap the benefits of having you. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. I wanted to tell you about a, uh, an experience that uh, happened years ago. We saw a, uh, a craft, per se, in my, my parents' backyard. Uh, this was probably 20 years ago. Uh, in the middle of the night, my sister had gotten up from her room and went through their living room, going to the kitchen, and they had a huge plate glass window. And uh, she sees this disc shape about two, seemingly about two foot in diameter, circular. It yeah. seems to be floating. I don't know how much time you have. Um, well, not not a lot. I mean, you've got to get to it. So, okay, a disc, uh, as in flying saucer. Seemingly. Yes, and okay. Seeming to be floating and hovering, going up and down a little bit. It's got a green light, and it's foggy. It's a foggy night, and the green is illuminating the ground. And occasionally it has a red flash of light on it. So we watched it for quite some time. My parents got up. They watched. We tried to take pictures. We looked at it. Uh, my grandfather, who lived about 15 minutes away, my dad called and said, you've got to come see this. We drove over, and then it, we, it turned into, what do you do? Now we see, we're seeing this. What do we do with this? Uh, my grandfather had some friends that worked at the sheriff's department, and he decided that we needed to fall the law. So they came out. And uh, got out there with a the bullhorn and talked to it. Uh -huh. So they're they're yelling up at a flying saucer with a bullhorn. Please state your business. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, stop, stop, stop. You're telling me the cops came out with a bullhorn. They're yelling at yeah. the at the saucer to please state your business uh, or what? They just wanted to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Kind of lights on it. Let me fast forward because I know you're short on time all the way to the end. Did they draw their guns? No, no, no guns were drawn. But by the end, Wildlife and Fisheries was dispatched to remove their mosquito trap that they had placed on my parents' property without permission. You're telling me that's what it was? <laughs> that's what it turned out to be. Oh, good lord. But Everybody was up all night long, <laughs> and it was a fun night. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. All right, thank you very much for the call. And the story that I thought went somewhere, and can you imagine? I'm down now, or we're going to shoot. On my I made a deal with the devil line, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, Art. Hey. It's Lewis from... Uh, well, you don't have to say where you're from, Lewis. You did make a deal with the devil, right? 
did make a deal with the devil when I was younger, when I was around 21. I, uh, uh, I'm kind of embarrassed, but that's all right. I wanted, I wanted a lot of sex with women. How's it going? It went very well. I had sex. Lots and lots of it. Really? Lots of it. Uh, You made this deal at what age now? I was 21 years old, Art. 21. I'm embarrassed to say. No, no, no. It's all right. I I understand sex is a very strong, uh, I guess, compulsion would be the right word. And so you you basically said, look, uh, you give me all the women or whatever women I want, and I will give you... My soul. And of course, back to mute for hopefully that wasn't long enough for the copyright to kick in. As we wait for the music to finish, let's get a item or two a glyph. Fifty-two seventy-eight. This song was particularly for the caller that I've got on right now, and uh, here he is again. Uh, sex Something boy, about gir- right. girls and souls and stuff like that, right? Yes, sir. So I was twenty-one, and I ended up going to the seedy uh, gothic club out in Los Angeles, uh-huh. Hollywood, California, and I met this really hot chick. Mm-hmm. Um, she claimed to be a vampire, mm-hmm. so I mean, who doesn't want to take a vampire home, right? And um, um, when she was at my place, now remember, you got to keep your, your language clear here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. She took me. She, I took her home, and and she pulled out a vial of blood, and she uh, wanted mm-hmm. me to drink some with her. So yeah, yeah I, that's what I thought. And I said I'd rather drink your blood, and and she uh, she obliged, and she. Uh, cut her wrist a little bit and she let me suck from her wrist and, um, and then she wanted to suck from mine and I, I, I you know I had never done that before I was young and, and uh, didn't really know what to do but I ended up going through with it and you know just as uh, things kept going how old, uh, how old are you now? I'm 38 38 old. 38 Yes, I'm, I'm old now. So still getting women? Are you are, are you still getting women? I, I mean, surprisingly, yes. It's it they they just keep they just keep throwing themselves at me. It okay. just it never stops. I get it. And it's it's uh, sounds good. So I mean, to, for for me, uh, you know, the path to the devil was the best thing I ever did in life. Um, I wonder uh, how many women. I mean, I'm after only a ballpark figure here, but how many women since you made the pact do you think you've had? Just a guess. Probably, probably, uh, I I know it's been over a hundred. Oh, um, yeah, it's been over a hundred. And, you know, the the only, the only thing that that ever went wrong was just a, a, a quick bout of chlamydia, but. I got to take care of You know, listen to me. A quick, bout, a quick bout of chlamydia is going to be nothing compared to what you're headed for, you know? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> it's not so quick, trust me. <laughs> yeah, all right. So this is going to be our night, huh? <laughs> People who have made a deal with the devil. Um, area code 575-208-7787. Listen, let's go make that look like a walk in the park. Uh, hello there, um, Skype James, I believe it is. I don't even know how to follow that up. I don't know how to follow it either. Uh, back away from your mic a little. You're too loud. No problem. There you go. Well, Art, it's really good to have you back on. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, I grew up listening to you late night uh, at 36 now, and I've been listening to you ever since I heard you first on the radio back in my teens. Mm-hmm. You know what's going to happen to that guy who was just on? He's going to get down there, and they're all going to be down there waiting for him, and every single one of them is going to be diseased. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> it's a great line for tonight, I think. It is. 
And then, listen, my, my devil line is ringing off the hook. Uh, so. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, one quick question. You're, the audio, I, I have to say, you and Keith have done a fantastic job. Thank you. It's better than anybody else is doing via radio or online. And it just sounds great. On so Keith my question behalf, on is, is so what type of headset are you using? Uh, it is a German headset. I, I really shouldn't go beyond that, but uh, I use a headset mic. You know, that way I can move around in here, and I'm always the same distance from the mic, so it doesn't sound weird when I move around. Well, it, it sounds great. Again, we're we're just glad to have you back on the air. All right. Well, well thank, I do, thank you. I do have one quick thing, though. Yes, yes. Yeah. I did a little road project out there close to Area 5th, or excuse me, close to the Roswell incident. Um, you know, Roswell's closer to a, the, the incident was actually closer to a city called Corona That's than right. it is to actually Roswell. Did you bring back any souvenirs? You know, I went out there, and it has got to be about the calmest place I've ever been. It's, you know, it's there's nobody for miles around. The wind blows, and that's about it. And it, it's a very calm, soothing, relaxing place where you can see the stars. No, even, and, uh, even the birds don't chirp. <laughs> no, actually, you don't hear birds. <laughs> you don't hear birds. That's because but, it's really completely dead. It's a dead <laughs> zone. That's, that, that's, that is a little true. They have dead zones at sea, and down there, I'm sure they've got one on land. That's true. All right, brother. Appreciate your time, Ben, that you're back on radio. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, uh, well, whoever it was couldn't hold. Uh, we had yet another I Made a Deal with the Devil caller. And uh, these are serious, you know, really serious. As I mentioned at the uh, um, the beginning of the program, it doesn't mean that you have to meet with a horned one. It doesn't mean that you have to actually sign a paper. It doesn't work that way at all. In fact, it, it's much more its much more of a subtle thing, as you've been hearing from these callers. In your own mind, you can do it. You can say, look, I am i want this. I want all these women. I want all this money, whatever it is you're going to make the deal for. And you can seal that deal in your own mind. And trust me when I say it is irrevocable. So uh, if you made a deal for women, you might as well, you know, Go all out, as it were. I don't know about that last caller. Too many TV shows. Hello there, you're on the air. Hey, hi, this is Tom from Florida, and it's uh, Manny Roswell's, and it's a great honor to speak with you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to bring up, um, first I wanted to uh, state a comment and then um, give you an experience I had. Okay. Um, the comment I have is, uh, it goes back to your question of, like, if there are time travelers in the future, where are the time travelers? It's a good one. So I've, yeah, I, I, I've often thought, uh, I've, I've heard the theory about uh, all these UFOs that have been popping up around the world. I, I strongly believe that there's a very good possibility that could very well be us in the future visiting the past in certain times. And, um, and even... Uh, Experiences people have with these gray aliens, I, I, and they also experience humanoids with the gray aliens. It's very possible that these you know, the grays could be a form of uh, biological robots that are like the assistants. Uh, well, you know what I think. Here's what I think. Right now, we're going through a period of uh, intermarriage in America, in the world. I mean, you see people married to. Uh, well, my wife is Filipino. Um, you see people married to Mexicans, to people from South America, uh, Europeans married to Asians. We're getting this great mix that's going on, and it's accelerating. It's going faster and faster and faster. And I think that eventually we'll all be grays. Yeah, that's, that's, and there could be a, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just going back to the whole, like, People experiencing also humanoids. I think, I think we'll all be gray, sir, with somewhat Asian eyes. Think about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if we yeah, continue right. intermarrying the way we're doing, we will be grays with somewhat Asian eyes. And I'll leave that thought with you. Yeah, and the atmosphere of the Earth could have changed, could change by then. That uh, you know. Yeah, I mean that's that's evolution. <laughs> that's evolution, <laughs> but, uh, is right. 
Uh, the also you know, the experience I had was in a house I lived in when I was a teenager up in New York. I believe it possibly had paranormal activity in it. The reason why I say that is I remember one morning I was uh, sleeping in my bed and my dad was he'd be getting up to go to work and everything. Normally he'd come in before he'd leave to say goodbye to me. Well, I was laying there and I heard him going in from out of his room to the kitchen and all that. Right. And the door, like I had my eyes closed, but the door to my, it seemed like the door to my room opened because I, you know how you can sometimes see the, even with your eyes closed, you can see the room brighten up a little bit. Sure, sure. But, yeah, I got that sensation. And I looked over at the door and I saw a shadowy figure of a man who I, I, I thought was my dad. Yeah. I didn't really see features of him. And it approached my bed, and here I was waiting for my dad to lean over. And you know, say something to me, and it was just like he put was never there to begin with. Shadow what's person. Weird about that? Yeah. Shadow and person. What's, and what's weird about that is I remember we went away for the summer uh, one year, and we had our uh, neighbors watching over the house. Did you? Did you? Hey, did you go under the covers? No, I. What I kind of kid are you? If you get a shadow person in front of you or an unknown being, you always go under the covers. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I saw it was my dad. I, I wasn't scared. I, I expected it to be my dad, but yeah. it wasn't. It was okay. like it wasn't there to be. Right. Anyway, uh, I, we, uh, we went away for the summer, uh, and when we got back, the neighbors, uh, they wanted to tell us something, and their little daughter, um, I remember her pointing up, just, you know, their parents, uh, her parents said, uh, tell them what you saw, and she pointed up at my bedroom window. It happened to be my window of our house. <laughs> and said, I saw an angel looking out at me. Uh -huh. An angel, huh? And, and yeah, and I mean, if you think about it, it's, um, what would a little, how would a little kid, you know, experience stuff like describe something like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> it just gave me chills. And there were other little things that happened. It wasn't. Well, that's, 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 that, that one's not so bad. An angel is good. Um, unlike when I go to this line and I meet somebody who has made a deal with the devil. Uh, Turn, turn your device down, double dealer. Come on, turn it down. I'm really sorry about that, Mr. Bell. I'm in that car. I'm actually driving. Okay. Work. You, you, you know you're not supposed to be talking really cool. and driving, right? Um, thing, it's an absolute honor to talk to you, Mr. Bell. Thank you. And a couple of days ago, you had... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to let you go on. You got to listen to me. Have you made, have you made a deal with the devil? No. I'm leaving the line. If they won't pause to talk. He was, he was trying to get a story in. But it obviously wasn't the deal that I'm looking for. On Skype, I've got Matt. Hello, Matt. Oh, or Uber Roswells from New Orleans. <laughs> Thank you. How's was New I was Orleans, by the way? I want to tell you about 10 years, well, 10 years ago this week, I was uh, listening to you as Hurricane Katrina approached. I believe you were talking to a friend of yours that worked at a Lake Charles station. Right. Uh, that you hunted uh, tornadoes with. Yeah, that would be just Lynn Whitlake. Exactly. It's something I, I relate very much to the storm, uh, just hearing you, I guess, uh, probably a few hours before the storm hit, but... Uh, it's kind of funny that, you know, Danny's kicking up out in the Atlantic right now, almost 10 years uh, to the date with Katrina. Currently, uh, currently Category 3, but nothing to be concerned about. It's going to run into a wall of dry air and uh, dump a little bit of uh, good rain on Puerto Rico, and that would be about it. Yes. Well, that, that would be a, a great outcome for everybody. Uh, just, I, I had a question, Art. Uh, I've, I wanted to know if you were going to have possibly Michio Kaku on uh, in the future, one of my favorite guests you've ever had. Oh, yes. Yes, we have a great lineup of guests coming. But, you know, I, I really can't talk about the guests coming because sure. of reasons that I'm sure you understand. Sure. And I, I was just curious. I've always uh, been a real big fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I know he's never been on your show. And I was wondering, is there a reason for that? Or do you have no, plans to maybe yes, get him on the future? I have plans, yes. But, you know, I, I can't I, I, I can't tell you when. But, yes, he's coming. Well, sure. Uh, uh, great to have you back on Art, and thanks for taking my call. Right. Thank you for making it. And, again, if you have made a deal with the devil... Then, um, and while I appreciate your, your well wishes and everything, 
This is only if you made a deal with the devil. Otherwise, do not call this number. I mean, who knows? Think of it this way. The devil might be out there right now. And if he is, and he knows you call that, this, you're trying to call that line, he might assume you're a candidate for a deal. I put you off a little bit. So if you made a deal with the devil, it's <laughs> very good. 575-208-7787. Special number, 575-208-7787. But only if you made a deal with the devil. That's all. All right, let's go to, mm, I don't know, let's go up here and say hi, you're on the air. Hey, Art. Good hey. to talk to you, buddy. Hey. Um, so I want to confirm that uh, while you're on hold, uh, you're definitely not getting any audio from the show. So that's probably why you got it. Uh, Man, I so don't get that. When I when I was in a break, I called one of the lines myself, and I was here in the show. I don't get it. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. interesting. How could it be right, some so lines and not other lines? I don't get that. Uh, well, that's a bug. I'm sure you guys will figure it out sooner or later. Oh, it really so is a bug. Uh, well, hold on a minute. I'm putting you on hold. I'm going to count to four. One, two, three, four. Did you did you just hear me count to four? No, sir. I did not. Oh man. Yeah, and, and that that's why we're all toggling back and forth to make sure we don't miss any of the show while we're on hold. Got it. So uh, I had a couple of comments uh, about a show you had earlier in the week. You had Joe Rogan on, and that's I right. caught the tail end of that when he was talking about his. Uh, sensory deprivation chamber or tank right. and uh and then you had david sarita on immediately after that and right. uh one wonders um if david has his own sen sensory deprivation tank because um uh, some of that stuff he was uh spouting off about i almost pulled the rest of my hair out <laughs> uh <laughs> i can tell you are a bit frustrated too i mean i don't have much hair to pull out yes i okay. nor do i sir i follow david to a certain point and some of it I understood, and then he went off a cliff and lost me. And I, I, I tried to get myself back, but I couldn't. And apparently you couldn't either. So yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, I mean the 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 first the simplest way to see that there were some flaws in the mathematics he was using when he was discussing the standing wave frequencies around the stars. Yes. And he he defined it as the frequency of, is the speed of light divided by the radius of the star, or the, basically the, the circumference of the star, but it boils down to, to the radius of the star. Right. You know, disregarding the factor of two pi. So it, in the tones that you played for him, the, the the one for Vega, it was a nice, beautiful tone, but it was right. a high pitched tone. Right. Um, it was a high pitched tone. Now, you also played. Uh, a NASA um, measured tone of our sun. Yes. And it was much, much lower, if you recall. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now, yeah, so if my third grade math doesn't fail me here on uh, your, your radio show, uh, wouldn't the, wouldn't the, uh, the star with the larger radius be lower? One would think. Um, now, uh, wait. But who am I to judge? Uh, I, I, but yes, I would think. And I, I thought, by the way, uh, for what it's worth, I thought the. Uh, the sun was the best. I really liked it. I don't know. When I heard the sun, it sounded like something baking to me. And I mean baking. All right. Now, once again, uh, let us uh, pick up the I made a deal with the devil line. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Yes. Hey, I made a deal with the devil. You did. Yes. And uh, how long ago, you sound young, how long ago did you do this deal? Oh, this is very recently, all right? I'm only 23 years old. 22. Yep. Okay, I'm impressed, um, I think. Uh, what was it that you wanted out of this deal for yourself? Well, the deal was that I'd give him my soul, but in exchange, he'd have to give his soul to God. <laughs> Well, that'd be a non-starter. Well, I know so, what he told me. It, what, I'm, he probably told you to go to hell. He told me to get the heaven out of hell. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, come on now. You didn't really make a deal, did you? No, that's all. <laughs> you're another you're faker. Back on the air. Another, yeah, I'm glad you're glad. Thank you. I do appreciate it. 
But, you know, I want people that made deals. Hello there. Did you make a deal with the devil? Hello, Ward. Hello. Yes. 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 Hi. 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 Do I have two people here? No, just one. Just one. I heard another voice. Okay. Anyway, yes. pro proceed. Um, I made a deal with the devil, but it's a little different than the other stories that I'm hearing on the radio. Well, that's um, quite all right. Everybody has their individual deal, right? Right. Um, mine was almost to the day 18 years ago. Can you hold on during our break? Yep. You can? Okay. Good. Okay. This sounds like it's going to be a good one. And again, we're muted just for the musical bumper. When they come out of that, we'll come back to her story of the devil. Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please ring Art's Bell at 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. Sorry about the apparent thing with uh, not being able to hear while you're on the phone. Definitely should be able to hear. Ridiculous. So we'll, we will get that solved. Uh, let me try something. I wonder if I push this. No. Probably shouldn't have pushed that. Like this. Probably shouldn't push that even. <sighs> well, we'll figure it out. Going back now to our caller. Hello there. You were telling us uh, you had made a deal with the devil, right? Yes. Okay. Anyway, 18 years ago, actually, on uh, September 27th, it'll be 18 years. Um, I was in the middle of childbirth, and it looked like neither of us were going to make it, and I'm not a religious person. I just remember as they were, all the medical teams were rallying around and doing everything they could. I just said, anyone, you can have whatever you want. You can have my soul. You can have any part of me. Just say it's this baby. And right about then, her heartbeat started picking up, and they were able to get to her. And as soon as, as, soon as they were able to get to her, she started crying. Well? And I will tell you that there's been a lot of update for <laughs> the last 18 years, believe me. But she um, she made it, I, and I don't particularly, I don't know, was it the devil? Was it God? Everybody can have their own opinion. But since I didn't, I just said anyone. I, I believe it was, and I believe I will, I have paid, and I believe I will continue to pay. But I hope that wasn't too boring of the story for you, but I think there's a lot of ways that we make Deals. Hacks. Yeah. Well, you know, in that case, I mean, it, it really, even though you, you, you didn't specifically make the deal with God in that situation, I'd sort of give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, so you're probably all right, but you did specify anybody, huh? Yeah, I didn't care. Um, I, I'm sure you've not been in that situation exactly, but... No, I certainly okay. have not. I, yeah. Nor do I look forward to it. <laughs> anyway, um, I think you're all right. I, you know, that's my pronouncement. I, I think you're probably okay. Okay. Well, I didn't even know who you were until like a week ago. So, really? Um, How did you find really me? Really, my um, my boyfriend, I guess, was listening to you forever. I see. And so now you're every infected. night, you since you came back on, you're infected. You're played until I fall asleep. I see. All right. Well, listen. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway, I hope I didn't bore 
your yeah. listeners too much. No, 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 no. Um, it, this way you'll, you know, when you pass on, you'll be surprised. Yeah, and not everything in life has to be about sex, just so your listeners know that. Well, uh, well, there was another caller who thought that it did. Years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's I guess you heard that. I did. <laughs> Thank you very much for the call. Let's take care. <laughs> All right, we will leave Art Bell there for the night as we have the new day in Dominion dawning. We'll be back tomorrow for day 38, the last thrashes of Winterfest. Of course, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Get us to where Boxy over at Nexters will pay attention to us. That's 5,000 views, 1,000 subscribers by YouTube. And I'll bore you with the Coinbase plug. It's down below if you wish it. And it's always a great day in a great new world to release the Krakens. See you tomorrow for Day 38.